Could you benefit from building supreme confidence? What would change for you if you played your best when under pressure? What's it costing you to not have the confidence, the poise, and skill to execute when your team needs you most? I've created an exclusive training video designed just for you. I outline the three critical keys to building unshakable supreme confidence and dominating under pressure. You'll also find out how you can apply these to your career today so that you can start to speed up your results and follow a predictable system to get you to your goals. Go to omnotyou.com forward slash dominate under pressure. You can go ahead and access that free training in less than two minutes. You'll be learning exactly what I teach my high performance professional athletes and clients about what it takes to dominate. Again, I'm not you.com forward slash dominate under pressure. If you try to get right, then you listen to my dad. <laughs> He's a beast. And if you don't want to listen to him, okay, okay. You don't want to, you don't want to get successful. If you ain't trying to dominate, man, then go listen to something else. Welcome athletes, top performers, and all those looking to gain that killer instinct that edge you need to dominate in any environment. This is the Sports Motivation Podcast, and I'm your host, Nee Shobo. I played ball and succeeded at the highest levels, and I'm now committed to showing you how you can accomplish the ambitious goals and visions that you have. This podcast is designed to teach you high-level strategy, not just fluff and hype. This will cut to the core if you let it, and by taking action on the practical, and next level advice I share, you will see results. Expect that. Expect to be more confident. Expect to be more focused. Expect to be more decisive. And expect to be more fearless. Expect to become the leader your vision needs you to become. So listen up. Take notes. Let's get to it. Welcome to the Sports Motivation Podcast. It's your host, Nee Shobo. Yo, today's episode is unique. I just got, um, me and my wife just went to an event last week. We had the honor of going to the National Achievers Congress. It was a convention. Tony Robbins was the main headline. Gary Vaynerchuk was there virtually, actually. Um, some other really big names were there. But anytime you have the opportunity to see a guy like Tony Robbins, who I believe is the MJ, the Michael Jordan of this whole personal development thing, um, you have to jump at it. And so actually, when, I remember when I first saw that he was coming to Portland, this was like a few months ago, I was like, what? He coming to Portland? This must be like a scam or something. But I was like, whatever, let me just see. Tickets were, tickets were really cheap. It was like $100 a piece or something. And, um, and we made it happen. So anyway, me and my wife went all day. Uh, it was it was awesome. And so what I wanted to do today was share with you some of the things that I learned. First of all, you don't know who Tony Robbins is. Um, you can start off by just getting his book, Awaken the Giant Within. It's a monster of a book. Um, that book will change the game for you. But to put it, to, to introduce him and uh, to those of you who don't know him, he's basically a personal de- uh, or a peak performance coach, a guy who's been around, who's been doing it for 30 plus years. He's coached uh, Presidents of the United States, you know, uh, Bill Clinton, Serena Williams. Um, he's a very well-respected uh, guy and has been doing it for a long and has influenced a lot of people in this whole personal development industry, myself included. I study Tony Robbins. I've read all these books. Um, I listen to I've, his audio book. Some of his audio programs have literally changed my life, um, literally. Um, and so He's someone who, who has had not just a big impact on me, but a lot of people. And so not only that, his events are very one of a kind, very unique. His events are live. They're like a concert. Um, they last a very long time. There's a lot of music being played and you are literally vibrating with energy at the end of it. Uh, it's one of a kind. I can't really explain it. Honestly, you're just going to have to go and see for yourself. But anyway, I wanted to share 10 things that I learned from this that really uh, helped change the game for me, um, things that I had heard him say before. But again, it's not just about what you hear once. It's not what you hear about twice. One of the things he always mentions is that repetition is the mother of all skill. Repetition is the mother of all skill. So that means these things that you hear me say over and over and over, I'll say them, I'll say them over and over until my face turns blue. Because maybe on that 10th time, it will click. 
is how many things do you know, but you don't act on? And you don't act on them because it's not yet instinct to you. And you develop that through repetition, all right? So here's the 10 things. Very, very critical. Let's go. Number one, the number one thing that I learned from Tony Robbins, I'm not even operating close to my maximum emotional capacity, all right? This dude is 55 years old. Um, like I said, his events last all day. We went to his one in L.A. a few uh, a year or so ago. And actually, after I went to that event in L.A., that was the reason I started this, this podcast. I started it immediately upon returning. This dude is on a whole nother level when it comes to his emotional juice and his intensity. All right. If you know anything about his diet, he eats pretty much, you know, salad and lean protein. Um, extremely disciplined when it comes to that. He very, very highly values energy. And you can see because at his age, he's operating at a level most can't even think about. Like, for example, I'll just give you an example. Today, I'm recording content today. And I usually record eight episodes at a time. After I'm done with those eight episodes, I am very, very exhausted. I'm very tired. I can't imagine, and it takes me, what, four to five hours to do that. I can't imagine what it's like to be on stage all day and do it four days in a row at the intensity that he's at. And so what I learned was that I'm not even operating close to what I can be when it comes to my emotional intensity. And I talk about prime time a lot. Being able to physically alter or alter your physical state. In order to create energy, he talked a lot. He talked like an hour. And the first, his first hour of his presentation was all about the importance of your energy. And he was trying to get our energy right because it was low. Portland wasn't holding it down in that area. So that's one thing I learned, man. So uh, for you, that means getting around other people who are going to push you uh, emotionally. And that leads me to number two, environment matters a lot. Environment matters. Like when I, if you can go to a... Just think about this. If you go to a concert, have you ever been to a concert and you just feel alive after work? What would happen if you put yourself in an environment like that all the time? That matters. That highly impacts the type of things that you do. And so when I go to an event like that, where you have 5,000 people in a room, all live, all there to learn, all hungry to learn, there's something that happens there. It's like a magic. It's an energy that's tangible. You can feel it. And so environment matters, all right? That's the second thing I learned. Number three, you know, he talked a lot about suffering. And I learned that we make ourselves suffer way more than we have to. His definition of suffering was anytime you're in a negative emotional state that doesn't have a good impact on others around you, anytime you stay in that emotional state, that's suffering. And the reality is that we are responsible for how we feel, meaning we're responsible for how to change it. And that definition of suffering made me see things in a totally different way. Because most of us think suffering is like, you know, depression or, but no, what if you changed your definition of suffering and made it more not likely to stay in that emotional state? Does that make sense? You can change your definition. And he said someone had helped him change his definition and that changed the game for him. So that definition of suffering, I think makes us look at, you know, negative emotions in a whole nother light, all right? The next thing, number four, he said, Trade your expectations for appreciations and your whole life will change. To me, that was a mic drop right there. That was something that blew my mind. And again, I had heard that before. And there was, it was actually Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, another speaker who was speaking earlier, and he talked about that same thing. One of the crazy things about highly successful people that one of the things we don't really realize is they don't really expect a lot from other people. And they don't because they're too busy giving. They're too busy serving. They're not sitting around wondering why everyone hasn't done anything for them. And so what he's saying is if you trade your expectations, stop expecting things from people and start appreciating what they do, your whole life will change. And I agree with that 100%. It's much harder to do than it is to say, though. It's a lot harder to do. It's a practice. But I suggest you uh, internalize that one as well. Number five, he's always, he always talks about the three things that will determine the quality of your life, the three decisions that you're making all the time consciously or unconsciously, that ultimately determine your destiny. And those three things are this. Number one, what you focus on at any particular moment is going to affect how you feel and ultimately lead you to where it, what it is that you do next. Number two, what that thing means that you're focusing on. What does it mean? So are you focusing on the fact that the coach didn't put you in? Well, what does it mean? Does it mean that you're a horrible player? You get to decide on that. 
The third thing is what you're going to do about it. So what you focus on, what it means, and what you do. Those three things are in your control. And if you seize them, and again, all, most of this is happening on an unconscious level. We're not really aware. But if we seize those three things, we take conscious control of them, we can dramatically alter the, the destination of our life, what happens, the destiny of our life. That's powerful. That was really powerful. That slapped me in the face. All right. Another thing he said, which is number six, he said this and I was like, wow, massive action is the cure to almost all of your problems. Massive action is the cure. A lot of times we have a problem and we sit around thinking about the problem. We spend all of our time thinking about the problem, feeling the problem, feeling the stress of the problem. But what we don't understand is that those people who are successful, I had a conversation with Tony Horton, the, star, the, the, the founder of P90X, and I asked him as well. I said, what, what's the thing? that he, he trained you know, Usher, Bruce Springsteen, all these successful guys he's around all the time, and he's very successful, sold over a billion, you know, billion dollars worth of P90X. And he said, these guys, for some reason, every time they see a problem or a challenge, they get excited. They actually legit like it. Because while we're busy worrying, they're busy taking action to solve their problems. Massive action. So if there's not one way to figure it out, figure out another way. If you don't know, don't know what to do, do something, anything, just to keep the momentum going. And life, nature rewards those who move. Because when you move, it shows you're committed. And they like those people that are committed. Massive action is the cure. That was powerful. Number seven. He talked about the number one most important asset that you have, the most important quality that anyone desiring success can have. Anyone who wants success, anyone who is successful is their number one asset. And he says is this, hunger, being hungry. What is hunger? Hunger is different than desire. Wanting something is cool. That's like level one. Being hungry is being obsessed with it, starving for it, desiring it, craving it, and letting that hunger drive your actions. And having a hunger for something higher than yourself. There's nothing wrong with having a hunger for, you know, other types of success. There's nothing wrong with material things or fame or anything like that. However, at the end of the day, not all hunger is created equal. Not all of it's going to last. The kind that is clean, that's pure, that burns clean, is the kind that's all about other people. That hunger, that drive to be great, that drive to serve, that drive to leave a legacy to impact those after you're gone. It's powerful. Number eight, being obsessed is a good thing. You know, a lot of, and I have to remind you, because I was reminded, and this is it's important, people around me sometimes give off the impression that my being obsessed with the things that I do, being obsessed with the quality of this podcast, being obsessed with how much I can serve my clients, being obsessed with how I can create groundbreaking technologies that will serve athletes for years to come. Some people act as if maybe that's a bad thing. Maybe I need quote-unquote balance. But what I learned from Tony Robbins is that being obsessed is a good thing. Being obsessed is a prerequisite. Grant Cardone in the 10X Rule, he has another book. What does he call it? Uh, I'm looking at it. Be Obsessed or Be Average. That's what it is. I just read that book earlier this month or earlier last month. Grant Cardone, the 10X rule, be obsessed or be average. You must be obsessed. Don't let other people make you feel bad for that shit. Go after it. You got it. Being obsessed is a great thing. You must be obsessed. You must be all in. You can't dabble. You can experiment a little bit. You got to be all in. And that's one thing I learned. The next thing, number nine. We experience our perception, not the facts. This was powerful, the way, the way he sort of framed this. We experience not what happens. We experience our perception of what happens, and that's what creates the feeling because our feeling is created by what our focus is, and what we're focusing on is our current perception about what happened. There's many ways to look at the same problem. The facts are the facts. Our opinion about, about what the facts are is what makes us feel the way that we feel. And that's a breakthrough. That's a breakthrough of a concept right there, if you can really un understand that. So that means anything that happens to you, you can look at it in such a way that it can benefit you. Now, it's difficult to do, especially when society has 
conditioned us to look at things as black and white, good or bad, right or wrong, horrible or great. But you get to decide. You get to decide what that means. It's even funny. I see some of these, you know, uh, documentaries on like ESPN, and they play the music in a certain way when things are going on. That's how society frames things for us. If you don't believe me, watch a movie. And if you watch a movie without the music, a lot of the emotions taken away. So the movie is the frame, is the is the perception, the opinion. The movie, the the, the, the music helps determine what our opinions are about the facts. And that's how we can do in life. Like you experience your perception, your ideas about what's going on, not the facts. Distinguish the two and then decide on what your perception will be. That's the power that we've been given. And the last thing, number 10, the last thing that I learned from Tony Robbins, I shouldn't say the last, but the last thing I'm sharing with you today is that life is about growth. Life is about contribution. He outlines what he calls the six human needs. These are needs that we all have, but we value some over the others. Here are the six human needs. Number one, certainty. That means to the, the, the desire to avoid pain and gain pleasure. We need to know. We need to know that we're going to be comfortable. Another word for certainty is growth or, or, or is, is comfort or safety, right? Security. Number two, uncertainty. That means variety, spontaneity, spice. A lot of people get this from causing problems and causing drama in their life. Some people get it from jumping off buildings. Some people get it from the food that they eat. We all need variety. How do you get yours? Number three, significance. We all have the desire to feel important. Number four is love. Number five is growth. Number six is contribution. The reality is that what he's saying is that we all value at least two over all the others. They're all needs, but we value others more than, than we value two more than all the others. So think about it for you. Which needs do you value most? Are you more about significance? Are you more about feeling important as opposed to giving or growing? Do you value certainty over growth? Do you value that comfort? Knowing you're going to be okay over the growth? Because a lot of times the growth, is not going to, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty there. And how do you get those needs met? And what he's suggesting is that growth and contribution are the needs of the soul. While the other four are the needs of, like I guess, the flesh, if you will, as it says in the Bible. They're all needs, but we can choose to value some over the others. So these were some things that I learned at that, at that convention. Uh, it was awesome. If you haven't already, I highly suggest you get Awaken the Giant Within. That's a game changer. He has a new book also called Unshakable. Uh, it's on financial freedom. But anyway, think about those things. Tony Robbins is somebody you need to follow. You need to understand his work um, when it comes to managing your emotional state there's not too many sources that's going to that are going to show you i suggest you go to one of his events as well it will change the game for you in the meantime stay at it keep going don't stop i will suggest that you go to seminars please go to events don't just read go to events as well be around people who are going to push you that are going to challenge you that's one of the things that i hope to do in this podcast is challenge you we need people to challenge us Man, after I, I left, I, I, had a, I had almost a binder full of notes about things I wanted to do, things that I'm now doing, all as a result, spending $100 on a ticket and choosing to spend my time a whole day around some high-impact people that are going to help me change the game and help me get the results that I want, all right? So that's something to think about moving forward. Keep at it. Keep going. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to the Sports Motivation Podcast. Make sure if you dig in the podcast, go and subscribe so you can always get the latest episodes. I come out with a new episode twice a week on Tuesday and Friday at 3 a.m. Eastern. And make sure you go ahead and rate it and leave me a good review. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and I'll talk to you soon. Much love. Yo, one of the most common questions I get from athletes all the time is this. What is the single best thing I can do to reach my goals? How can I set myself apart from everybody else? Obviously, there are a lot of things, but the one thing that's helped set me apart was having a coach, a mentor, someone to show me the right strategies and how I need to do things specifically to achieve my results. 
So you could try to do it on your own, but you'll end up making many mistakes that could have been avoided if you had someone guiding you and coaching you along the way. 99% of athletes in the world have, have expert coaches to show them the things that they can't see. If you want to work with me as your coach, I want you to go to imnotyou.com forward slash SRC and learn more and sign up for a free coaching session. I'll give you 60 minutes of my time for free and I can teach you some dynamic strategies plus show you how you can secure me as your sports results coach. All I ask is that you fit in this criteria. You're serious about your sport, you're willing to invest the time and money, and you have clear goals of taking your game to the next level or some sort of specific results you want to achieve. This is definitely not for everyone and I have very limited spots available for this. So. If this applies to you, I want you to take action. Go to imnotyou.com forward slash SRC, and I guarantee you're going to take your game and your career to the next level.